everyone. Right, so the animation plane right now utilizes some of the techniques I'm going to be showing you in this video. So did you know that it is possible to create a first person camera within Cinema 4D? And setting this up is actually really simple. So I've basically just attached a camera onto a Mixamo rig. I've attached it to the head to create this first person perspective. And it's really cool because the camera moves with the character's movement. So wherever the character's looking, whatever it's doing, if it's jumping, sliding, or even swinging on poles like what you're looking at right now, the camera is going to move exactly with the character's movement. So a first person camera is possible with Cinema 4D. And if you're interested in setting up something like this, then stick around for the rest of the tutorial. And without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so for this tutorial, I'll be using Mixamo, and Mixamo contains a large library of mocap data. So we can actually start bringing this character to life and get him moving. So head over to Mixamo.com, sign in, and I've gone to characters. Now you can use whatever character you want, but I'm on page three and I'm using this character called David. Okay, and then we can head over to animations and choose just uh, three basic animations because we'll be combining them together, attaching the camera to the character's head, and I'll show you that the camera even moves with the transition of those combined Mixamo animations. Okay, so I'm gonna grab two animations, go to the animations tab and just type run and press enter. So I'm gonna be using this running animation over here and I just wanna decrease the speed a little bit. I don't want him to be running too fast. So it's almost like a jog. And there we go, and there's cl just click on download, download the FBX with the skin and just download this and save it to your desktop and into a folder so everything is nice and organized. And the second animation that I want is a slide in animation. So I'll just type slide, press enter, and I want this running slide that you see over here. I'll also decrease the overdrive a little bit so that it's not that fast. And there we go. And then just click on download and save that. So I've got my FBX files saved and organized in this folder. And let's bring this into Cinema 4D. So open up Cinema 4D. Let's go to File, Merge Objects. So I'm going to start with running. Click on open, I'll leave everything default over here and click on OK. You do not want to reassign the takes, so over here click on no. Now select all of these objects, right click and just group this. And then I'll rename this running. Now I want to go to file, merge and I want to bring in the sliding animation as well because we're going to go, be going to be combining these animations together. Okay, I'll click on no, select all of this, right click, group objects and this will be slide. Now let's go ahead and actually send this over to the timeline. So this is going to be my starting animation, which is running. So select that, go to animate, add motion clip. By default, that should be selected. So deselect this remove included animation and click on OK. It's going to create this icon, the motions icon, motion systems. And then you can you click on open in timeline. OK, so let's send the slide animation over to the timeline as well. So select slide, go to animate then go to add motion clip. All right, leave everything default like this and click on OK. So you'll see we get the slide animation included. Now I can actually go ahead and hide slide because the slide, because slide is a part of my running animation. Okay, you can see it's over here in the timeline. So right now if I click on play, you can see that we got that nice running animation. Okay, so I wanna combine the slide into this run. So to do that is really simple. So these icons over here, if I click left and right, I can scrub left and right, right on the timeline. And if I scrub up and down, I zoom in and out. So let's grab, sli uh, grab the slide and just drag and drop it onto the timeline and just bring it closer to our running animation. So right now, if I click on play, you're gonna notice something happens, right? The character runs but then the character sna snaps back to the exact same position where he started. So I want this character to continue sliding from where the character stops running. And to do that is extremely simple, okay? And by the way, if you wanted animations to blend a lot smoother, you would actually overlap this. So I am going to overlap this sliding animation just by a couple frames, maybe to frame, let's say to frame 17. Okay, but like I said, the biggest issue is that the character snaps back over here. So we need to create a pivot. So while you have the slide animation selected like this and it's in orange, go to advanced and click on create pivot. So now we've created a pivot point for the slide in animation. And now you'll see if I move over here, we see this red outlined image. Now we just need to move this to the end point of where the character stops running. Now, an easier way to position this might be to go to the right view 
this orthographic view and just line it up like this. So you see exactly where this red line stops over here is where you want it to start with the end position of this run in character. Now I might have to rotate this as well so that my character's feet over here are planted on the ground. But you can see the starting point for this running animation. Need to move that up just a little bit so it matches it. So now if I scrub through the timeline, watch, you'll run. And then immediately it goes into a slide. So I'll just play that run, slide. So that's how you move the pivot point to create a continuous running animation. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to perspective view. I'm just going to click in my middle mouse wheel and then go to perspective. And now let me just look at that animation one more time. Run and slide. There we go. So this is perfect for setting up a first person camera because it's going to be attached to his head. And we'll even see the sliding animation and the character's foot will actually be in view as well. So you can use a default Cinema 4D camera, but I am using Octane Render. So I'll be using that in this video. I'm going to open up the live viewer and then just go to objects and Octane Camera. Okay, so this is the most important part of the tutorial, obviously, because now we're actually creating the camera that gets attached to the head. So let's do that. So if you've got multiple animations over here, the running animation was our main starting animation. Remember the slide was connected to running. So we need to connect the camera to that first main animation, which is going to be running. So you'll see I'll click on the drop down arrow. Here's our Mixamo rig. Let's click on plus. Let's open up the spine. Now you can right click over here and unfold all if you want to see everything. But I'm just going to do this manually. Uh, here's neck and then here's the main one. This is the head rig. So take the camera and just make it a child of the head. Right, so now you already have a first person camera. But we need to position this camera inside of the character's head so that we're looking at the viewport or the viewpoint from the character's perspective. So grab the camera and go to move. And we can see which way the camera, camera is actually facing. So I'm just going to hold down shift to snap that in increments. And let's move this back. Okay. I'll just scale. Oh no, I don't have to scale that down. And now let's just move this a bit closer. And we want to position it right here by the character's head. So this field of view cone that you see over here needs to be positioned right inside of the character's head so that we get the exact same camera movement. So you'll see even right now, if I scrub, Notice that the camera is moving with the character, right? And that is exactly what we want. So we've officially got a first person camera set up and it really is that simple. But I want to show you something that you're going to encounter right now because the camera is placed inside the character's head. So if I go to extensions and just open up the live viewer and just send this over. Okay, let's snap to the camera right now. You'll see that we're actually inside of the camera, uh, inside of the character's head. And this is obviously creating an issue. We can't see anything outside of the camera's head. So I found a way to get around this. <laughs> it's really simple as well. It's a super easy fix. All right, let me just pause that. We want to create a material that is completely transparent. So Octane Material and go to Opacity over here and bring this all the way down to zero. All right, so this is a transparent material. Let's snap out of the camera. Now let's find the body part for the cameras, uh, the body part for the character's head. So here's body. And now if I go to polygon selection, right, and I change this to rectangle selection, if I select the entire head and just drag this material on there, it's going to make his head transparent. Now let me just make sure I click back on this so that his head snaps back. And now if I open up the live viewer again, Okay, you'll notice that because his head is transparent and I snap back to the camera, I've got a clear uh, a clear view now of whatever the camera is looking at. Right, you'll notice if I pump up this value again, we're looking inside of the character's head. So you just add an opacity layer that's completely transparent so that you can see through this geometry. Okay, so just a quick fix. Okay, now I just quickly went ahead and created a very basic obstacle course for the character. It's obviously just basic primitives so that we can see what's happening with uh, from the first person perspective. And this is how I set up my scene as well with the buildings. It was just basic primitives to get an idea of what's happening. So you can see in the scene our character runs. Right, he's going to get over here. And I might have to adjust this, maybe make this a little bit shorter. Right, so he's going to get over here. 
and he's going to start sliding underneath this this obstacle or this table. Let me just bring it to the side. There we go, character slides. Boom, he comes out on the other side. And there we go. Alright, so let's look at that through the first person perspective. So I'll snap to the first person camera. Let's scrub back on the timeline. Okay, so what I want to do here is I want to select this camera and by default I think yours should be on classic. You want to make sure you select super wide. So super wide is just going to give you a larger field of view and sometimes with the character's movement you'll even be able to see their arms and their legs. So now the character starts running. You can see the, the entire movement is in first person because it's attached to the head. They get to this obstacle over here and now they're going to slide. Right, so they're going to slide underneath this table. There we go. You can see a little bit of the leg was in view over there as well. So they slide in under the table and then they get up and that's the end of the sequence. And that is the first person camera. So we've got an entire run and slide sequence that's attached to the, cam uh, the character's head and everything is in first person. Now obviously these are basic building blocks. You can do whatever you want with this technique. The most important thing is showing you the technique and how to set this up. So remember, you can always go back to the camera and push this field of view a lot wider. Right? Just decrease this value. Right? If you want this to be very wide, you can do that. You can see if I start going like really, really crazy with the focal length, I can actually see the character's hand. Uh, but you have to be quite... Um, you really have to use this with caution because sometimes it can really distort the way objects look within the world. So just play around with the focal length and find something that you're happy with. But I, I found that super wide. I actually used super wide on the animation you were watching. Just the default super wide. And I was actually happy with those end results. Now you can also select the camera. In this case, since the character's moving, if you're creating a running sequence, I would actually add some motion blur. Now remember, I'm using Octane Render. I would enable some motion blur and maybe put this on a value of 0. maybe 0. 08 or 0 0.01. You don't want to put too much motion blur. Uh, so now to look really cool, there'll actually be a sense of speed when the character is moving. So just another quick tip. And since I added motion blur, just to make sure it's actually working uh, with the camera and the character's movement, I'd want to select my running group over here. Then I would want to right click and create a octane object tag and then go to motion blur and change this to transform and vertex. So notice that really helps whenever you're trying to get the motion blur to be visible. And that's applied right here onto the running group at the top. So now everything should be good to go. When you look through your camera and you adjust your, your motion blur over here, you should have motion blur whenever you render out your videos. All right, so that's the entire technique. Now you know how to even combine and uh, mix more animations together to get them to run coherently and in sequence. You know how to set up a first person camera. You can see just how simple it is. And in the beginning, I was just attaching, you know, like objects to characters like hats or weapons and it would move with the character's movement. But I had no idea that you could actually attach a camera. So this is really cool that you can do this and create your own first person uh, sequences with maybe somebody running through a city or whatever you want, you can now attach cameras to those body parts. It's really, really simple. All right, so that's the end of the video. And you can see over here, I started exactly with the way I just showed you with these basic building blocks and just put in some notes on here and where the character would run and jump and swing uh, to create this entire video you've seen over here. You can see he starts, he wakes up, he looks back at his death count. And he runs to the front of this building and he's like, nope, you know what? I'm going to find a more creative path for myself. So then he jumps this way, as you can see on the drawing. He starts swinging across this pole. I put an obstacle over here. He slides under that, just like I showed you in the video. Over here, he does some wall running. So there's a wall running Mixamo animation. He finds the, this word that says the death loop awaits you. He gets to the end and he jumps off. So there's a total of 18 uh, mix and more animations that have been combined over here to create this entire sequence. But now that you know the techniques for doing this, you can create a video like this as well. The buildings is just a bunch of Kitbash buildings that I purchased from kitbash.com. It's called Neo Shanghai. And that's what I use to create this Mirror's Edge inspired video. 
So I hope this has been useful for you guys. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave them below. I truly appreciate the support on this channel so much. Stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials and goodbye.